Tom O'Connor. I'm the Director of Marketing and Audience Development for the Roundabout Theatre Company in New York City. Today I'm going to be talking about a few of the ways Roundabout has shifted its media strategies to make all of our channels work better together to serve our strategic needs. By the time I finish up in the next 15 minutes, you'll know what this image could possibly have to do with performing arts marketing. In the meantime, let's get started. As some of you may know, Roundabout is a Broadway and off-Broadway theatre company here in New York City. We compete within a very dense theater market, not even considering the other thousands of live entertainment options that abound in the city every day. But when thinking about our marketing challenges specific to Broadway, we're competing in the most expensive media market in the country. We bring in approximately a half a million theater goers and upwards of $25 million in ticket sales every year, which represents a small percentage of Broadway's economic footprint per year, but to put it mildly, we have a great challenge garnering attention for our productions in a market that is full of competition. So while some of our titles are well-known entities, such as, say, Cabaret, more often than not, we are producing titles that are not so well-known, such as our production of Terrence Radigan's The Winslow Boy, or this past season's first-ever revival of Sophie Treadwell's Machinal. So in a market where familiarity is key, we commonly find ourselves needing to introduce and inform the theater-going public about a title they may not be incredibly familiar with. So to that end, our campaigns have historically been planned on somewhat of a show-by-show -show basis, as opposed to more of an institutional, season-long basis, so that we can make adjustments based on our relative success over time. More often than not, we're challenged with building familiarity and giving customers a sense of what a particular production is, so our advertising creative has generally been driven by the show brand over our company brand. And because we often have up to five productions and thus five campaigns running at once, we've had many concurrent messages within a given channel. So using that reality as a starting point, we realize that we need to do a better job of focusing our messages. Until we do so, we're creating a lot of competing messages that are likely to result in a lessened impact overall and thus a good deal of waste. So by refreshing our strategies, we hope that we can not only improve the return on our marketing investment, but it'll also provide us an opportunity to build a greater level of awareness of our full breadth of offerings. Beyond our individual show brands, we have a lot of opportunity to convey the full scope of Roundabout, from our productions and our various genres, to the benefits of subscribing, to our need for support across our education programs and all of our other activities as a not-for-profit theater company. So acknowledging that our media placements can only go part of the way toward achieving these goals, we've really focused our media around three new objectives. Distinguishing our productions and driving sales, in other words, selling some tickets. Distilling and prioritizing our messages for a saturated public. In other words, stop expecting our audiences to drink from a fire hose of all the messages we're trying to serve them at once. And lastly, capturing leads to build direct relationships hopefully reducing future reliance on paid advertising. So this past season was our first opportunity to utilize this refreshed outlook on our season media. And what follows here are some of the ways that this approach was brought into action this past season. In order to think more holistically about our various messages and initiatives that were being received by our audiences, it was important that we consolidated all of our various campaign strategies into one seasonal plan. This helped us to not only look at the activity of a single campaign at once, for example, such as this weekly advertising plan for Cabaret, but by consolidating into one season-wide plan, we're able to easily identify overlap in areas that can be shifted to allow for otherwise competing messages to have their own moment and a better chance to penetrate in a crowded field. When we layer in all of our productions into one flowchart, we can see how all of the activity within a given week relates to other concurring campaigns. And yes, I know this is comically small. The type is not what is important here. But this change allows a change in thinking and also requires us to look more broadly at our activity. And when we're really zooming out to our whole season's media footprint, we have a more holistic view from which to negotiate our media rates with key advertising partners. It also enforces a new level of discipline to ensure that we're not piling on an unmanageable amount of calls to action at one time. While it's a bit challenging to measure penetration of all these various messages in this new configuration, we do know we've realized tremendous savings as a result, which brings me to my first set of measurable results. As a result of consolidating these various campaigns and buying on a seasonal basis, we've decreased our cost per thousand across some of our key digital media buys by anywhere from 7 to 33%. Naturally, I like 33% better. But on an offline basis, we've seen even more drastic results, 
with our unit costs for some of our key print media decreasing by more than 50% when we really consider the lower base rates as well as additional bonus space. Needless to say, this has been tremendously advantageous for us. The next pillar of our new media strategy is a real focus on capturing leads from the launch of each production to reduce our reliance on paid media over time. This largely takes the shape of incorporating an email sign-up call to action across all of our various channels. Most directly, we do this on our website. For example, here is where we utilize Leadacity on our website to serve this message and allow visitors to sign up for updates as more information is revealed. This same call to action is utilized on social posts, leading up to on sale as well as in all of our press releases. By simply taking these opportunities to harness audience members' interest and enthusiasm, we've increased our email club membership by 30% to a high of 175,000 members. But the idea of lead capture goes beyond email addresses. In somewhat of an invisible fashion, at least to the visitor, we're creating a pixel pool by serving a cookie to early site visitors so that we can target them with digital banner ads through third-party ad networks at a later date once tickets have gone on sale. I'm gonna speak more on similar types of ad retargeting later. But generally speaking, lead capture is most successful in the build-up to a production's on-sale date. To that end, our first activation of these leads is often driving subscription sales as an early access and value message. While interest may be piqued by an individual production, such as, say, Cabaret, we will take the opportunity to upsell subscriptions during the lead up to the public on sale. This allows us to leverage early interest and hopefully build audiences for our surrounding season productions as well. For those who prove unwilling to subscribe and just insist on paying full price for one production only, we are happy to allow them to do so. So to that end, we've incorporated an internal email club pre-sale for every one of our individual productions with additional pre-sale opportunities for donors, I should mention. In past years, we may have negotiated pre-sale opportunities with various sponsors, for which we received substantial media as a part of that package. But as, generally speaking, sponsor priorities have shifted, we've come to rely even more so on our own channels to drive these pre-sales, and sometimes to striking effect. Again, using Cabaret as an example, we deployed a simple email to our email club promoting a pre-sale message, knowing that this particular production was in very high demand. And while I have obscured the dollar amount here for the sales on the first day of this pre-sale, you can see very clearly that the email outperformed the first day of public on sale, which was supported by a full page Sunday New York Times ad by nearly 20%. Now naturally, this is a sample production with incredibly strong demand straight from announcement, but results remain consistent with less popular titles as well. And this clearly illustrates the opportunity when we utilize the direct relationship we have with our customers to convey our sales message. And lastly, following on sale, we utilize our pool of cookied site visitors to begin serving digital ads touting the production on sale. And on the topic of digital ad targeting, I want to talk about the last critical change in our media strategies this past season. In a lot of ways, digital advertising is evolving to a point where it's able to be utilized more like direct marketing than traditional advertising. The first way this takes shape for us is the use of social advertising to support our direct marketing campaigns. By uploading email lists of customers who've recently received email and direct mail campaigns directly into Facebook, we're able to provide an assisting impression. In this case, promoting a post within a user's feed and delivering a more coordinated campaign effort to support the sales message. Now, while we can gauge and measure these ads on a standalone basis within that channel and see that they're regularly performing very well, we're still seeking ways to evaluate how these additional impressions are improving the efficacy of the initial email and direct mail campaign. In other words, if we can track who received both the direct marketing effort and the social impression, we can see if the social impression is increasing the conversion rate overall. The technology isn't there quite yet, but we're working on it. Now lastly, I wanna talk about a new way we are determining which ad creative to serve a given user depending on their site behavior, known as waterfall targeting. So what does this mean? Firstly, our third-party ad-serving platform will determine whether a customer has visited the Roundabout website using Google Analytics. If not, it is rather simple. A user is then served an even split of creative messaging around all of our individual productions, or perhaps a brand message or a subscription messaging, depending on where we are in our campaigns. However, if yes, they have visited the site, we use site analytics data to determine the best messaging to serve based on some key questions, such as, have they been to a specific show page? Have they selected a performance in the purchase path? How long has it been since they've done so? And have they purchased tickets? 
So let's just look at a few simple examples of how this works in action. If a customer has visited, for example, the Bad Jews page, and yes, this is the title of a show we did last season, uh, but they've not gone so far as the purchase process, they'll begin receiving banner ads for Bad Jews specifically. However, if that customer has gone so far as to purchase tickets and reach the confirmation page, they'll no longer be served creative for that show and will flow into the next stage of the waterfall. They'll then receive a mixture of creative for our additional productions or perhaps for subscription. Now, if the customer has only gone part of the way through the purchase process but has not completed a purchase and two weeks have now passed, we've begun experimenting with what kind of incentive messaging will cause them to re-engage and complete their purchase. Now, in full disclosure, this particular tactic has not yet shown a great deal of return, but we're continuing to experiment with new incentives that may be more compelling. All that said, waterfall targeting has opened up a whole new suite of capabilities for how we can think about fusing our digital advertising with the methodologies we've employed in our direct marketing channels. And to that end, I want to thank all of our agency partners who play a part in both our media strategies and planning, as well as our ongoing website analysis. Thank you all very much for watching today, and I hope this proves useful to you.